All right, so as I put some basic stuff on um, staying safe and social distancing while scuba diving, and I've also gone over and got um, dive sites information and stuff like that. Um, so as we'll talk about that towards the end. Um, first of all, I think, well, it's possible that uh, most of you have seen the post by Paddy, um, giving uh, sort of like basic things. Um, and obviously because we're scuba diving, we're, when we're scuba diving, we have a regulator in, we have a mask on. So uh, we're pretty well protected. Um, our main issues are when we're on the surface. So, um, and I've got uh, procedures for doing courses when we do finally get back to doing courses. Um, and these will, these are pretty much uh, tying if you're just doing fun dives as well. Um, and it ties in with a lot of what the, uh, the dive centers are doing, uh, the dive sites are doing. Um, so basically we still all have to adhere to our two meter social distancing. Now as divers, there are some bits where we can't do that. So as if you're wearing a dry suit, you'll need somebody to do up your zip, unless you have a posh dry suit like Steve. Um, because I could get into it by myself. <laughs> um, we're also going to have to help each other on with kit. So at these points, we're going to be not social distancing. So it's when we're doing those sorts of things, it's a good idea to have your own face covering of some sort. Because obviously we're not, we can't all carry the equipment around all the time. So some sort of face covering, as you would do if you were going on the bus or the trains or stuff like that. Um, and also hand sanitizer. So when we do hand sanitizer, um, I've bought a load of hand sanitizer for when we do do courses. So it's every time before you touch equipment, put some hand sanitizer on. And then after you touch equipment, put some hand sanitizer on. Um, so we do it beforehand because it's the hand sanitizer will kill everything on your hand and that will last for a little while. So even if you touch something, it will help kill whatever it is. Um, but just to make sure we put some on afterwards as well. Uh, when you're, because we're outside, um, we also have to think about the way the wind blows and the way when we've got our regulators in, the air's coming out of our regulators or our snorkel. So it's the way we're blowing our air. Um, obviously, if we've got a regulator in, we're going to be blowing the air back that way. So the people right in front of us are quite safe. But if somebody's right behind us and we breathe out through our regulator, that's going to blow anything nasty we might have back that way. Um, the same with the snorkel. It's going to be going that way. Um, so think about that and think about the way the air is blowing. The wind is blowing so try to be upwind as it were from other people or sorry downwind from other people no upwind yeah so <laughs> other people are blown out yeah there we go um when you're uh when you are kitting up most dive sites now there's not going to be any changing facilities uh, any showers or anything like that because obviously they can't keep those clean um, so uh, most places are going to expect you to get changed by your car um, so it's like uh, Gildenberg you're not supposed to have any equipment water sites um, so like on the greenery by the side of the lake they want you to have all your equipment by your car and if possible park your cars next to each other so you've got your own little area between you and your buddy um, that way you're not spreading anything around or anything and nobody can touch any of your equipment uh, there's also not going to be any cafes or dive shops open um, so it's, it's a good idea to make sure you bring something to drink or any snacks or anything like that because there, there's not going to be anything there for you uh, make sure you do have a decent safer dive box because you don't really want to get there, especially with the hassle we're going to have at the moment 
of going to dive sites and find out you can't dive. So it's a decent day to save the dive kit, quite handy. Um, now with, um, when we're going to dive sites, uh, the HSC have put out guidance to asset members. Um, for filling your tanks. So there's two options that they've put down. There's the 72 hour option, which is uh, basically you'll go to where a dive shop or wherever, where they can fill it up. You drop your cylinder down, uh, step away. Then the staff member comes up wearing PPE, picks it up, fills it straight away, but then it goes into quarantine for 72 hours before you can then pick it up again so that there's no chance of any uh, contamination that way. Uh, the other way is a quick fill. Um, so it's the same two, uh, two meter distancing applies, you drop it down, the staff member will come out with PPE. Um, and what they're gonna do is they're going to disinfect your old cylinder, including inside the valve, and then disinfect the whip before they put it inside the valve. Um, so is that there's no chance of any contamination that way and then you can get it back but obviously the problem with this is that they're using disinfectants inside the um, inside the valve so is there's a risk of water egress um, especially into your well water and disinfectant egress into your first stage and into your regulator so you do have to make sure that it's properly cleaned beforehand to so make sure it's nice and dry. Open up the valve, blast any air out before you attach your first stage. Okay. Steve, yes. when, when you, if you chose the 72 hour option, would, I mean, say you go to Gildy and have two dives and you want your tanks filled before you go, Presumably they'll fill them and then you put them in the car and leave them for 72 hours. Or do no, they you're... keep them for 72 hours? No, they don't give them back to you for 72 hours. Great. Um, <laughs> so is that basically the idea being that you, you drop it off on a Tuesday, you get it filled, put the diving at the weekend on a Friday or Saturday. Um, I, I, this is, uh, it's pro, um, it'll, it'll make, a, make, make a little bit more sense when I say what I'm going to say about the dive sites and the rules that they've got in place. But yeah, you can sort of like drop it off at Gildy beforehand, now fill it so that they're ready for when you turn up to go dive. Yeah. Um, but I think what most pl places will do, they'll just do the quick filling thing. We're just going to have to be really careful to make sure everything's dry, make sure there's no disinfectant because we don't really want to be inhaling disinfectant. Um, that tells me. Inhale as much as you like. Fill <laughs> <laughs> everything in your lungs. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> it um it might be helpful to get a list of other places where you can fill stuff up because um, people obviously don't live near Gildenberg. <laughs> Yeah, it is um, not during the week and then take it at the week. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, th those procedures are for everybody for every dive centre. So it doesn't matter where you take them; they still have the same procedures. At least they should have the same procedures. No, but I've, you um, know, if, but, if there's a shop near you, you could drop it off, pick it up, yeah. and then take it to Gildenberg rather than having to go to Gildenberg, drive home, go back again at the weekend. Yeah, there's, um, there, obviously there are quite a few, or well, there's a few shops around, a few shops left, not many, there's a few shops left, um, but a lot of them aren't open at the moment. Um, so, it's, actually, what, let's go here. Um, it does seem a little bit extreme, given that, we're filling, you know, people at work are wearing three or four cylinders a day, charging them, cleaning the cylinders, putting them on day in, day out. I, I think it's, um, I think it's a liability issue. 
more than anything, just to make sure that you are complying with best practices should somebody get it and then decide to sue. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I get that, but it is, it is very extreme given the risk, but there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not, um, this has come direct from the HSE. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's not just an interpretation. This, this has actually come from the HSE. Yeah, I get that. And it's so, a different interpretation for what they tell us. So because yeah. it's a different situation. And so. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, talking about the dive sites and stuff. Where did I put that? Give me bits of paper. No. Right. Okay. Um, what have we got here? Size. So the dive sites that I've spoken to, so as we're talking about inland dive sites now, um, Oldenburg opened on Sunday. Uh, Raysbury is open, I'm not sure when they opened, and Stony Cove is planning on opening on Wednesday. Um, now, uh, and ANDAC have no idea when they're opening. I spoke to them today. They're, they're not open, they're open for um, servicing and stuff like that. But yeah, they, they have no idea when they're opening for diving. Um, Vobster, uh, <coughs> where is it? Vobster is not yet open, but he's open to swimming. And from tomorrow, the 10th of June, um, the swimmers will be only be able to book a two hour slot. Um, has, uh, what they're doing is they're trying to work out how to get people into the place safely, in and out of the place like, safely. Um, they're planning on opening for diving at the beginning of July. No set date on that, but sometime at the beginning of July. Um, with Raysbury, it's... Um, yeah, we'll do Raysbury first. So what Raysbury is saying, you can't... They, considering it's so close to London, they seem to have really bad internet access because you can't pay online and they can't take car payments um, and you can't book online. So is, if you want to go diving at Raysbury, it is literally a case of turning up and hoping you get in. If you do get in, you have to use, or you have to make sure you have exact change because the person on the gate will be there with a box with a little hole in it for you to put the money in. So there's no chance of getting any change. And the same sort of thing is going to happen with the airfields down there. You have to have exact change for your airfields. Yeah, well, I'm not going to change. Is <laughs> <laughs> that what I miss? Well, normally crap visibility anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, but nobody's going there, so it's going to be awesome. Oh, it will be, yes. In the first 10 minutes, <laughs> until I kick up all the silk. <laughs> well, the, the way around that, Steve, is to not swim behind you. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I get in an hour before you, I'm still going to ruin it for everybody. Oh, I can't, you haven't forgotten how to use it, Steve, have you? Sorry? Sorry, Simon? You haven't forgotten to use cash. How do you use cash? I, I was looking in my wallet the other day, and I've still got a whole load of stuff in there from since before we went to... Lanzarossi. <laughs> I, I can't remember the last time I used cash. No, it was definitely before because I had uh, some change, same as you, I had some change in my pocket when I went to Lanzarotti. Hmm. Yeah, I still got that change. I've not used it, I've not, and I've obviously not taken out any more cash because you can't use it. Um, yeah, but it does make things easier. I know it's a bit, yes. this whole cashless thing is a bit strange for you northerners. <laughs> um, you have to deal with Scottish pound. Eh? Sorry, you have to deal with Scottish pound. You can't be doing that. All, those, all that foreign money can't be doing that. 
Um, does Scotland just still have pound notes? Uh, no, I'm, I was thinking twenty pound notes. Five. 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 You see. Um, so it's the other two dive sites. They're kind of similar. So it's Gildenberg and Stony Cove. Um, so it's for them, you need to be a, a member of. Uh, it's like dive along at Stony Cove and the club at Gildenberg to book in and you have to book in online now you can book your membership you can uh, get your membership online beforehand and book in um, it's the same uh, at both sites and you can book online at the Gildenberg website and Stony Cove are oh you have a you have a new entry um, him looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not allowed to see her. Oh well. <laughs> That's my excuse at work. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us, Lauren? Okay, cool, no worries. At least you can hear us. Um, so, yeah, you've got the Divers Log up at Stony Cove, um, and they're launching an app. They're hoping to have an app available from Wednesday where you can use to book your spot. Um, the reason they're using the booking the spots is, again, to keep uh, the numbers at each dive site to a safe number. Um, uh, yeah, you've got, um, and you're also only limited to, I believe it's four hours on each booking section. And each member is only allowed to book one person in, so both you and your buddy have to be members. Um, the, the reason that they're saying is that if they need to do um, contact tracing, they'll have all the details, they'll have your email, your home address, your phone number. So if somebody does show symptoms they can put it out and they can um you can be traced and told to isolate um right that's the dive ah right so if you're going um most of you guys have your own equipment but if you don't uh, you have to book higher equipment beforehand um, now you'll, give, you'll be given a box with everything that's clean in it, a nice clean box, a sure box, you'll use that equipment and put it back in the box and leave it for the staff to clean afterwards. If you're hiring equipment for me, it's the same thing, except you won't get a box, you'll get a big plastic bag. So I need to know exactly what you need, sizes and everything beforehand. I'll clean it all, put it in a nice big plastic bag ready for you and then when you're finished you put it back in the plastic bag so I can bring it home and clean it. Not that I'm thinking that any of you are diseased or anything. But... <laughs> right, um, now the other option for us is shore diving. Um, now with shore diving we can pretty much do go wherever we want Unfortunately, we are in a part of the country where the water around us isn't the cleanest. Um, tends to be a little bit muddy. Um, but yeah, there are a few places we can go. Actually, we can go pretty much anywhere. Um, just as long as we stick to basic social distancing rules, um, we can go pretty much anywhere. There's, um, there's one place I was thinking about arranging a trip to that we've not done before. Um, I did it quite a few years ago. Uh, Celsi Life Station, Lifeboat Station. You swim around underneath there, and you've got the beach there. It's, uh, it's quite nice. And the car park, if I remember correctly, is quite close to the beach. Um, so it's, we can. Um, I'll, I'll look at arranging a trip there, probably July. Um, 
another thing with arranging these trips is obviously we can't stay anywhere says so we have to stay relatively close um i've spoken to uh pauline well sorry patricia at uh, swanish divers um they're not open yet they're not running their boat yet they're still working on a um it's like a safe system to getting people on their boats but i would imagine it's going to be the same as a couple of other boats that have opened up um so as you've got uh the boat out of brighton which is another place we can go to uh we can do that in a day so you don't have to worry about hotels or anything um they've got a big old um catamaran we have a lift on it but they're only taking six divers at a time so is that you've all got plenty of room on the boat and they're stipulating that again you must stay in your buddy pairs stay nice and close together in your buddy pairs um so as again we don't get any cross contamination between the buddy pairs um so as, uh to be honest brighton diver and swanage are probably the only two boats we could get on at the moment uh, due to the fact that we can't stay anywhere uh, is talk about opening up hotels and stuff at the beginning in July um, I'm not sure how, how safe that's going to be to start off with the best thing uh, with any of these things is to give it a couple of weeks after they open up before booking anything so they've got time to get all their procedures and everything in place um, yeah all right that's pretty much it so is um pools are not open yet um again rumors are that they'll open july beginning of july but it will depend on the facility itself when it's ready to open um but seeing as most of them are closed at the moment i can't really get any information from them um i have heard from polam the polam swimming pool in bedford um and obviously because that's attached to a school that's starting to open up they probably won't open their pool until um july uh but when they do i'm going to start booking the pool for a couple of hours each weekend because we're going to need to get some courses done we've got lots of people waiting to do courses um so as we can start getting that done and if people want to come in for fun dives club dives um if you let me know well enough in advance i can fit you in somewhere in one of the pool sessions um when it comes to pools we're looking at not using changing rooms so big towels around the side of the pool because again we can't really guarantee that the change rooms won't have lots of people's hands all over the walls spreading all sorts of um covid loveliness uh i mean it's it that's going to be the same with the um the larger swimming pools the leisure centers and stuff like that they you're probably not going to be able to use change rooms because basically they have to send somebody in to each changing room and each changing cubicle after somebody's left to wipe it down um, I mean obviously the pool area itself is quite safe uh, the chemicals in the pool will kill pretty much everything um, and obviously some of that some of those chemical vapor gets up into the air as it lessens the risk actually at the pool side it's, it's like the change rooms and the crossover areas where we've got to be careful um training wise for courses uh so again been speaking to pauline about those and um they basically they opened on sunday and they had all the plans in place but she told me she was worried that divers can't follow plans um and yeah apparently she was proved right when i asked her about it today um 
So yeah, they're, they're going to work, or they're still working on their plans on their set of ones. They're working on enforcement and making sure people stick to social distancing at the dive site. Once they've done that, they're going to start running some of their own courses to again make sure they've got their procedures right. And she was telling me she's hoping uh, beginning to mid July is when we can start running courses there. Now, when we do start running courses there, it's going to be a case of um, divers only. So no, nobody else can come along. It's only the people who are going into the water. We're going to have limited spaces. Um, and at the moment we have, it's like a maximum of six people uh together so for a course that means three students surface support and two divers or two dive team um so, so yeah we can only have three students at a time it's a little gray as to how many groups of six you can meet um we're not quite sure nobody seems to be sure how that works um but what i'm hoping is that it will be a case of so we'll have dive team there and then three divers in for one session, three divers in for another session with a an hour's break in between. Um, so there's no crossover between them. Um, and yeah, hoping July, mid-July for that to happen. Okay. Right. Um, so there's any questions about anything we've gone over there? Anything? We're not sure about right so is um, I've got all this written down um, I'm gonna put this up on the website I'm also recording this and I'll put this up on the YouTube channel so is that um, everybody who couldn't make it can have a read through the procedures and have a watch of this and hopefully we'll get them up up to speed um, and if nobody's got any questions about that next thing I wanted to ask about is um, dive trips. So because we don't know what's happening, uh, we it's difficult to plan things uh, too far ahead. So what I'm suggesting is for basically July and August, all I'm going to do is I'm going to organize a couple of day trips. Um, obviously, they're going to be limited. So it's, um, it's like once Swanage divers are open again, we can run down there. They've got two boats. We'll see how many people they can take out. And hopefully, they'll be doing the um, uh, the shuttle service. So we won't be limited to just six people on each trip. Um, and also, as I mentioned, we've got Celsi Pier or Celsi Lifeboat Station, and there's a couple of other shore diving sites that are within drivable distance of a day. Um, I mean, that, that's kind of our biggest issue at the moment, the fact that we can't stay anywhere. Um, so we have to kind of be able to drive to the coast, do a couple of dives, and then drive back in a day without killing ourselves um so it's that kind of um that limits it's like places like chisel beach no steve you're really looking forward to going back there absolutely <laughs> um, i lost if, the stone i reckon i only have two heart attacks this time. <laughs> um so yeah i think chisel beach is a bit too far for us to be going swanish is probably as far as we can go um, I mean, I've, I've done that a few times in a day, and it is doable. Um, you are knackered the next day, so it will just be Saturdays, but yeah. Swanage is probably as far away as we go. So like Portland and Chisel, that's an extra 40 minutes to an hour each way. So yeah, that kind of probably a bit too much for us. Um, well, it's too much for me anyway. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, I was arranging a dive trip up to our house. Oh, yes. 
That's still open, isn't it? Oh, that's opened again. Well, that's, that's the uh, thing is that uh, I don't know what people. So obviously, people have some people have paid deposit. Um, so whether uh, carry on with this because we're talking about the middle of August or towards the end of August. Well, or should we just wait and see how things develop? I yeah, I think what, you. At, at the moment, I mean, it's, um, I mean, how many people did you, I think you only had about six or seven on that trip, didn't you? That's right, but no, first dive trip away, people might be really keen on coming and saying, yeah, I'm not sure what the social distancing and stuff like that will require me to do. It right. Is a house, uh, you know, uh, which... I guess we could do something, but I, you know, the, the, I'm not sure. It's essentially, depending on what people's feelings are, I can sort of explore what this is going to be. I haven't gone back to either the house or to the skipper, but I thought if, if you know, because if people's view is, oh, we don't want to do it, well, that's the sort of definitive answer. But if we still want to go ahead with it, I can sort of start, um, you know, brushing it up and see what happens. Right, so as, as I understand from what I've heard, um, most of the skippers out of uh, Eymouth and up around St. Abs are running their boats at the moment on limited capacity, uh, like I was saying with the other, with um, uh, uh, Brighton divers. So they've kind of got half capacity. I can't actually remember who you're diving with. Um, paperwork up. Um, is it uh, Billy Shell? No, no, no. B Billy, Billy Shell is uh, Farns, isn't it? Farns, yeah, that's right. I don't know. It's all, it's all up north for me. Um, right, so is, um, Yeah, it's, uh, uh, the reason I was asking if it was Billy Shilk, because obviously he's got a number of boats, so that shouldn't affect if you're going to take more people up there. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, Rather than go ahead, um, as I say, if you're going to put information on the website, and I could, I could basically do this, just sort of sounding bell for people as to whether they're still interested, and if there is, start looking around. Now, the people I'm diving with, he's got a couple of boats, but I don't know what his diary is like. You know, it may all be have cleared out. Um, so was arranging farms prior Friday uh, with Billy Shield. So I don't know um, what, what that is. But uh, so, I mean, if, fundamentally, if, if the consent, if, let's see if we can go ahead with it. Then I'll <coughs> Um, I suspect you'll be all be absolutely gagging for a dive. So, you know. Hey, look, I've, I've done two dives this year already. That's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so the main issue with your trip um, would be accommodation. Because, again, like I was saying, we can't, um, un until they open up the hotels and stuff. And I've got yeah, I've got accommodation already booked. Yeah, but is it open? Well, it's a house. Not come. They Wait. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. They haven't given me the deposit back, but then it, I haven't asked it for it. Yeah, that, that, I'll hold on to those for the moment. But what you'll probably find is, it's like all Airbnb. Um, so uh, my brother was supposed to be in Wales at an Airbnb uh, in two weeks. Um, and yeah, they, Airbnb will give you back the deposit, no questions asked. Um, the, the question or the thing is with your trip is it's really dependent on the government on whether they allow these places to open up. Because at the moment, all the hospitality, all hotels, all chalets, all that, even campgrounds are closed 
you're not allowed to go to them. Um, so as yeah, at the moment, you would, if things are, as things are right now, we wouldn't be able to do that trip because we'd have nowhere to stay. Um, but hopefully, by the time your trip comes round, that'll be sorted and we'll be able, we'll have somewhere to stay. Um, so at the moment, I would suggest just holding off, um, just a, a bit of a holding pattern at the moment for these longer trips until uh, probably the beginning of July when we know whether the hospitality sector are going to open up again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, Fair. It's, uh, I mean, it's like the um, the Plymouth trip that I was running. Um, so yeah, that boat's running, but we've got nowhere to stay in Plymouth when we're staying there because all accommodation is shut, um, and Plymouth isn't somewhere where we can go and then drive back each evening. Um, so she said that the diving side of thing at the moment for most of the trips is fine. It's the accommodation that we've got to worry about. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, especially with St. Abs, uh, as, as I remember, you did a lot of shore diving last time. Um, yes, we did, but there's more. There's more boat diving this time, but there's also sh the shore diving. Yeah. So I, I, th I think people are already shore diving there now. And, and yeah. as you said, um, but then you see we're tough up here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're that close to the wall. You know, you've got wildlings everywhere. Absolutely. Cross giants and everything. <laughs> um, I, don't know about. I mean, this, this COVID is... Just a bit of flu. Depends <laughs> <laughs> who you are. Said the guy who, what well, it took four messages for you to reply and tell me that you were still alive after you told me you had it. <laughs> yeah, well, I had to drink, finish drinking my beer, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it took you a month? Yeah, but that's good medicine, isn't it? <laughs> hey, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully by the time that comes around in uh, end of August. Is it? Yeah, it's the end of August, isn't it? It runs up to the last bank holiday in August. Yeah. So it's I mean, if, the general message I want. So Sorry. Want to the best, but it, obviously, if the government turns up, um, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Out now and the deposit. Just let me know, and I'll. Get Right, okay. Um, if you could email me a list of who's on that trip, because I'm not sure if I have that, and I'll send an email out and let them know. Um, yep. It's, uh, but I, I would imagine, like you say, it's August, so it's, we're all kind of hoping that the worst of this will be over yeah. and we'll be back, back to some semblance of normality even if there is a certain amount of social distancing, we'll still be able to, we'll, we'll, we will be able to go out and do things. Um, but yeah, we, we just have to wait and see at the moment when it comes to that, which is why I was suggesting just for the next couple of months, organizing the day trips. Um, that reminds me, I'll, I'll have to message Trudy because uh, she's supposed to be running a trip just before yours as well. But yeah. Um, so I'll message Trudy and see what she says about her trip. We're not allowed into Wales yet, are we? I don't think we're. I don't think as English we're ever really allowed into <laughs> Wales. They just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> she said she was going to message here. the guy that was running the trip today. I think. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's again, all be, yeah. yeah, because it's we don't know what's going to happen. Um, I was kind of hoping things would have settled down a little bit more by now. We're, I was kind of hoping we'd be more in a European state where kind of they're all nicely opening up. They're losing one, maybe two people a day. Um, but now we're losing 
still over 200 people a day, so. Double figures, aren't we? No, triple figures of 260 or today. Yeah. Um, but hey ho, there's nothing we can do about it other than sit at home and watch Netflix for the second time. Because I've already watched it once. Or work all of it. Even. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just kind of here going, when's Stranger Things coming back on? That's supposed to be out soon, isn't they're it? Stop, they're about to stop filming. <laughs> I, th I, thought they, I thought they were still filming because it was supposed to be coming out. They, were, they, they had to <coughs> because of the sodding virus. So it's going to be towards the end of next year now, I think, before Series 4 comes out. Oh, man. I know. <laughs> you have to find something else to watch. I've seen it. All of it. <laughs> well, pick something else then. No, I've seen all. I've seen the TV. I've seen everything on TV ever. I've watched it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Well. All right. Um, so are we all happy with that. Uh, any other questions or anything? No. No. All right. Cool. So, is all happy about the plan? Just to do close by day trips for the next couple of months. So at least we get back in the water and do something. Um, I'll see if we can get a couple of boat trips going. Um, Is anybody yeah. interested in diving in Gilby in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. <laughs> I'll take anything right now. I was going to say, don't all jump at once, but... <laughs> I mean, no, I've got two tents full of air, and I was a member of Gildy. I think it's expired now, but I guess I could renew it. So if anybody wants to go... Um, yeah, I, think, I think a few people will want to go. I was, I was planning on going at some point. Um, I was thinking of going during the week, see if I can find somebody during the week. Mm -hmm. um, oh, definitely yeah. during the week, rather than at weekend, when it's yeah. a bit busier. Work. <laughs> I have some days off during the week, but it fluctuates from one week to the other week as to which days I have off. You don't need to get your lives organised and stop working. Oh, <laughs> forget <laughs> most of you. Have done. Like, I've got this week. I'm off Wednesday, Thursday. Next um, week, I'm off Monday, Friday during the week. Because when you know that far in advance, Gildy published the slots that they've got open yeah yeah right so um you're only allowed to go in buddy pairs yeah so you can only book so um yeah it's uh we can arrange it on whatsapp because that way obviously there's a lot of people who aren't on here um yeah. who might be able to go um yeah i, I just want to go jump in the water and see what it's like again and spend five minutes in there going oh god that's cold they've got five meters visibility that's 4.9 meters longer than it i've ever been seen there <laughs> have, you, have you seen the post today <laughs> uh, they put some posts up today on facebook it's basically you can see it's like a red sea a green it's there's a an really entire bus in one of the shops Sorry? <laughs> There's an entire bus in one of the shots, the whole yeah. thing. Blimey, I didn't think that existed. <laughs> That's a unique event, I guess. Yeah, so I, was, yeah, I, th I think it'd be nice just to pop up to Gildy, just go get wet again. Um, but yeah, so was, yeah, we can organise something on um, WhatsApp about that. Or poss okay. possibly organise a few trips up there, because like I said, we can only go up in buddy pairs. You can, um, um, I think it's cheaper if you book 10 slots or something per pair, all right. something like that. They've got some sort of discounted scheme for yeah. volume. They um, do seem to have an awful lot of slots uh, free, though. I'm sure it'll get busier and busier at the weekends. But. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they only opened on Sunday. Mm. So as I, th I think a lot of people don't know it's open so um i mean it's stony's not opening until uh, wednesday wednesday or thursday i can't remember um 
and that's not open. Vobs for isn't open, so it's, um, places like Gildy and uh, Raisbury are the only places open at the moment. So uh, I think a lot of people don't realise that they're open. Um, so yeah, the next couple of weeks is probably the best time to be going, where we can see the whole bus, <laughs> prove that it's there. And it's really warm. Only need a yeah. swimming costume, rash <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I get down that far and you can see that far. It should be nice down there. I would say it's that warm. I think it's about 14, 15 at the moment. That's warm compared to what it normally is. Army. <laughs> <laughs> Practically tropical, eh? <laughs> quite, yeah. All right, cool. Um, okay, if everybody's happy with that, uh, we'll call it a night. Okay. I'll see uh, some of you on, well, hopefully all of you on Sunday for Colin's quiz. Colin's doing a quiz on Sunday. Hopefully it's easier than the last one. <laughs> Just because you didn't win. Oh yeah, that's right. You won, didn't you? I did. I don't know. Must have cheated. You in collabs no. with Colin or something? Have you got one of his books? No. <laughs> I've got a standard chance of winning something. I can't do Sally's. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Sally's quizzes. Yeah, it's just the guy who. <laughs> That's the guy who won, wins. Yeah. <laughs>